Hello, good morning. It is Janae and it is Friday morning around somewhere between 10 and 11. Um, and, and we are here live talking love, sex and intimacy with Janae. So today I'm going to start um, a series around sexual arousal for women. So really focused on women right now. And um, the, what I titled on today's little video was Go Slow. And so I want to start by talking about, and I know this may seem obvious, but maybe not, that um, as you may be aware, the way in which women get aroused and the way in which men get sexually aroused are really vastly different. And it all goes back to the fact, it's, it actually goes back to our anatomy. It's very specific around anatomy. So you may have noticed this, men wear their sexual arousal equipment, their cock and their balls on the outside of their body. You may have noticed that women do not have a similar type of external genitals that men do. And because of this, men as they were little boys and then going into adolescence were constantly having a connection between sensation on their genitals and arousal, right? This is what leads to all of those very uncomfortable and for many men shameful experiences around having erections at inopportune times, like when you're in high school and you're looking at the hot girl or the hot teacher or whatever it is, right? A lot of men actually have quite a bit of um, shame around that as well. But regardless, because of this, because that you guys wear your sexual equipment on the outside of your bodies, you are much used to getting aroused very quickly. And you're used to a lot more sensation on your body. And so what happens for a man typically, and of course there's variations, is that you touch a man's penis and you know he's starting to feel arousal. And you've been, your body has kind of been, you know, sort of socialized is not the right word, but your body has been accustomed to having this type of experience throughout your life. And because of the experience that men have, many men think that women are exactly the same way, right? It makes sense. Well, if it works for me, it must work for you. But in fact, it's really, really, really vastly different. Women wear all of our sexual arousal equipment with the exception of our nipples on the inside of our body. Now, one of the things that's interesting to note is that when, um, uh, when the cell is formed at conception and it divides, the zygote divides and becomes either male or female with male or female DNA, the sexual DNA is actually very similar, right? So, you know, essentially a man's testicles are analogous to a woman's ovary. Literally, if you look at it from a, 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 a an anatomical, and I guess it's a molecular or cellular level, they are the same elements. At, just like a woman's clitoris is similar to a man's penis. And both, because of this, both women and men have a lot of erectile tissue in our body especially in our genitals and also in our nipples. Now, women have more erectile tissue than men, but we both have a lot of erectile tissue. The difference is how we work that erectile tissue and how it starts to, uh, how we start to experience arousal around it. So you may have noticed, both men and women, whoever is here, that um, if you just start with touching a woman's genitals, like going right to her piss, pussy or her clitoris, she may not be that happy about it. She may, in fact, push back. 
I know that the biggest complaint that I hear from women all the time, it just happened the other day in a session, was that um, her that, that a man just immediately goes to the breasts and the genitals when she's just not ready at all. And this is just a huge difference, again, between men and women. So when I say go slow, I really mean go slow when it comes to women's arousal. Analogize a woman's body like a cake being baked in the oven. And if you're a baker, you'll know that the center of the cake, the place that's most raw, gets cooked the slowest. A, a cake bakes from the outside in. And that's exactly, hey Saz, that's exactly the same way that a woman gets to arousal. For most women, it's from the outside in. Women have to be warmed up a lot. And typically, we have to be warmed up a lot more than men. So I usually tell my clients that the minimum amount of foreplay, which includes stroking and kissing and oral sex, um, should be about 30 minutes before penetration. And for most couples, that's just like, what? Are you kidding? Like, you know, if sex lasts for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, we're happy. And I get that the quickie is awesome sometimes, totally. But it does take a long time for women to be aroused. And just like a bake, uh, an oven that's baking in the cake, we really want to focus on arousal. And this is also for women masturbating themselves as well, right, that are doing a self-loving practice on starting with, <coughs> excuse me, light touch on the arms and light touch on the legs and on the neck and on the hair, right? There are a lot, a lot of erogenous zones that start to increase arousal. And of course you understand and you'll start to see signs of arousal if breathing starts, get, get, starts to get heavier. A woman will notice that, she, that maybe she's starting to get wet um, you may notice that she's starting to make some noises, right? There, there are signs that we want to look for to see where we are or where your partner is on the arousal scale. So going slow also means going slow when it comes, when you, when you finally get into genital touch, right? When you finally get down to genital touch, just like the whole body bakes from the outside in, a woman's pussy or her, vul or her vulva also bakes from the outside in. And again, a really common mistake that we make as women when we're trying to arouse ourselves and our partners make is just to go right for the clit. And um, for many women, that's just like a big absolutely no, I'm not ready. It's too sensitive. It's a very, very, very sensitive um, nerve ending. In fact, you know, women have as much nerve endings inch for inch in their clitoris as a man has in their entire penis. So it's a very, very sensitive place. If you take your finger and you um, rub your eyebrow, your eyelid, you will start to feel sensation and how raw it can feel. That's how it feels for a woman's clitoris. So going slow is the key to a woman really getting to a very, very, very high level of arousal. And um, I want to show you my little toy here. So I, I think I, I don't know if I posted this on Facebook, but I definitely put this in my uh, email that goes out to everybody on my list. To, to show you what this is. So it's not a wishbone. <laughs> I know it looks like a wishbone. This is actually a 3D model of a woman's clitoris. So notice how many pieces of the clitoris exist, right? Most of us think that the clitoris is just here. It's just the part we can see that's covered by a hood. But in fact, this is a, there's a whole series of erectile tissue in this clitoris, and most of it, 75% of it, is internal in the vulva, 
uh, and in the lips of the pussy. Um, these right here are called clitoral legs. They're called clitoral reg legs or crura if you want to have the anatomical correct information. And again, these are internal inside a woman's groin. It's like if this is, if the lip is right here, it's right underneath it. Now, if a woman's not aroused, you or she, you may not be able to feel it. If you're simulating yourself, you may not be able to feel it if you're not aroused. But because it's erectile tissue, all erectile tissue by its nature expands, right? That's how a penis gets larger. It's erectile tissue with the blood flowing and engorging into it. That's how a clitoris gets larger, erectile tissue. And this is all erectile tissue as well. And this is just as much a part of your clitoris as is the, the head of the clitoris, which is right here, or the shaft of the clitoris, which is right here. And all of this tissue can be aroused with stimulation. Now, it may be a little harder to reach <laughs> because it's not external, it's internal, but by putting pressure in the, uh, on the sides of the, the outer lips of the, a woman's pussy or the vulva, I'm going like this to try to show you that, you will start to feel these legs. They, they literally feel like this, um, and you can stimulate them. You can put pressure on them. You can vibrate them. Uh, if, you're, if you're using a vibrator, using a vibrator on the external part of your lips and really pulling into this area can be actually very stimulating. And many women can definitely have orgasms just from having their clitoral legs stimulated. So there's another piece of, of erectile tissue here, and it's right here. And again, these are internal. These are the vestibular bulbs, also part of the clitoris. And the vestibular bulbs are internal within the, the, the lips of the vagina. So you may notice if you start getting aroused or your partner starts getting aroused, that not only will the color of her lips and pussy start changing color very frequently, will start to get brighter red or brighter purple, but the lips start to get puffy. Well, the reason they're getting puffy is because of this erectile tissue in the vestibular bulbs. As a woman gets aroused, these start to engorge as well, which makes the lips of the vagina or the vulva also start to engorge. So um, another way to really, you know, so, so a lot of times, like we, that's what I'm saying, we, don't, we focus all our effort on this little part of the clitoris. But if you think about stimulating the lips as well, by massaging, by licking, by using a lot of hand pressure, you also will start to help engorge the, the vestibular bulbs, which also feels really, really delicious for women as well, right? So this is all part of women's arousal. The key thing, and I just want to reiterate this, is really, really going slow. Going, you know, think about a woman's, my, my, our, my friend Kai, uh, my colleague Kai, who was actually did a Facebook Live with me a couple of weeks ago, has this great saying. I think it's her saying, but she basically says, think about uh, a woman's entire body as being her pussy. Like her entire body has erectile tissue on it. Her entire body can be stroked and really focused on and licked or bitten and, you know, kissed. And all of that helps to build up arousal in a woman before you go directly to the genitals. So the more aroused she is on the outside, the easier it's going to be for penetration to happen, the more she's going to actually invite you in to be able to um, penetrate with your finger or your cock or a dildo, whatever it is, however you're doing it. Uh, the more aroused that she is. So starting from the outside and going really slow. Okay, so that's it for today. Just a little bit of information about 
um, the erectile network. There's a lot more to talk about, and I'll be talking more like next week about G-spot stimulation and female ejaculation. So this is the theme that's going on for the next couple of weeks, but I just wanted to give you a taste of it. Here's the, again, the entire clitoris 3D model. It's, uh, it's a little unclear whether this is erect tissue because I've seen other models that are a little bit larger than that, but I tend to believe that this looks pretty anatomically correct for most women. Y'all have a great weekend, and uh, we'll continue next week with women's arousal, talking more about the urethral spot, uh, the urethral sponge, and G-spot stimulation. Have a great weekend.